ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وانعم واكرم وبارك على حبيبنا وشفيعنا وملاذنا وقرة عيوننا محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه اللهم صل وسلم وانعم واكرم وبارك عليه في الاولين وصل وسلم وانعم واكرم وبارك عليه في الاخرين وصل وسلم وانعم واكرم وبارك عليه في الملا الاعلى الى يوم الدين يقول عز من قائل يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون in the name of allah the gracious the merciful to him we belong and to him we shall return we ask allah jalla wa ala in his infinite grace and boundless mercy to send an abundance of prayers and peace upon muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us on this blessed day of Jumu'ah, to forgive our sins and our shortcomings, and to elevate our ranks, and to have mercy upon our parents and upon our loved ones. May Allah bless them. May Allah heal those who are sick. May Allah give shifa ta man la yughadiru saqama to those who are ill. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon our dear brothers and sisters across the world who are facing tremendous hardship, who are facing tyranny and oppression, and abuse. May Allah alleviate their pains and grant them a speedy victory. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He illustrates to us the simple juxtaposition of life. What is this life about and what is, what is the test of this life? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ That verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tests us. He puts us through the trial and the tribulation of life. And life as we can experience it, as we experience it today, is full of tests and full of trials. But He puts us through this trial and this test for the simple fact of seeing who is truthful and who is not truthful. Who is truly committed with an honest heart to worshiping God and following in the footsteps of his illustrious prophets from Adam to Moses to Jesus to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is honest and truthful in their commitment to following in their footsteps, that is the test of life. And that is what I want us to consider this afternoon. I want us to ask ourselves, how committed are we? How truthful is our commitment to La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah? What does that look like every single day of our lives? Because that is the question we all have to think about. Because I know for many, there are those who believe, but at times it's done begrudgingly. Almost as if to say, you know, I'm a Muslim, it's hard work, and I'm barely holding on. And I know that that's the case for many, and may Allah make it much easier. And there are those who are Muslim, and they just take their Islam for granted. I was born and raised as a Muslim, and I come from a Muslim majority country and I just know to be Muslim and so I kind of go with the wind. There are those who are Muslim and they may take it a step further to, to speak about the beauty of Islam and to try to talk to others. And then there are those whose Islam is utterly what consumes them every single day, night and day. They are truly amongst the Siddiqeen, those who are truthful in their commitment to Allah Jalla wa Ala. And at the helm of those who are Siddiqeen, 
is as Siddiq himself, Abdullah ibn Uthman ibn Amir, better known as Abu Bakr as Siddiq, radiallahu anhu arda. Abu Bakr as Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, he was the most profoundly truthful one who was committed to Allah and His Messenger. And that is why he was known as As Siddiq, the most beloved companion of the Prophet. But when you look at his life, you see someone who every single day, his entire commitment was to pleasing Allah and following in the footsteps of Muhammad. And that is precisely what each and every single one of us in this room seek to do. We seek to be in the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We seek to live prophetically on this earth. We don't just want to exist, but we want to live. We want to be alive every single day with hearts and souls that are beating for the attainment of God's pleasure. And that was Sayyiduna Abu Bakr radiallahu an's life from the first moment. And he emulated the Prophet's life in profound ways. He was born two years after the Prophet was born, and he died two years after the Prophet died. The Prophet died at the age of 63, and Sayyiduna Abu Bakr died at the age of 63. Radiallahu anhu arda. And he was the first man to say, I believe. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat with the companions one day, and he said, every single person I presented Islam to, they were hesitant, except one person, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. As soon as I told him, I received revelation from the skies, and I told him about the reality of this life, and I told him about God, and I told him about submission to God, Abu Bakr Siddiq said, I believe. Amantu Billah. And that's why the Prophet Wasallam it is narrated that he said, but most likely it is an athar from Sayyidina Umar, that if the Iman of Abu Bakr was to be placed on one side of the scale and the Iman, the belief of the entire Ummah was to be placed on the other side of the scale, Abu Bakr's side would be heavier. That's how firmly grounded he was in his commitment to God. And the companions, when they observed Abu Bakr, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr, they were astonished by his ability to be in such high commitment and the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِكَثِيرِ صَلَاةٍ وَصِيَامٍ وَلَكِنْ سَبَقَكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ وَقَرَ فِي قَلْبِهِ That he didn't outdo you with much prayer and fast. That you're equal to him in that regard. But what he outdid you with is something that settled in his heart. And that was his belief in Allah Jalla His iman. Firmly grounded. And you know Abu Bakr radiallahu an was not a simpleton. He was not a simple person. He wasn't just someone who had blind faith. But he had objective belief because Sayyidina Umar was a scholar. Sayyidina Abu Bakr was a scholar. He was, he was a nasab, a genealogist. He was highly respected amongst his people in his capacity to tell you everything about your lineage. If he just knew a few things about your story, your, your fast, some names, he would look at your description he could tell you everything about your history, your uncles, your, your lineage, what you were known for, what you were famous for, if you were known for poetry or if you were known for generosity. And he was highly respected amongst his people. And he was a very wealthy man. He was a, a very well-to-do businessman, a tajir. They said that when he became a Muslim, he had 40,000 dirham, which was a heftiest sum for that time. But with all that, his purity was so evident. His purity manifested itself every single day. So much so that Allah refers to Sayyidina Abu Bakr three times in the Qur'an. And including other moments, you can say even more. atqa. That is in reference to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, that he will be saved, the one who will, be stay, who will stay away from hellfire is Sayyidina Abu Bakr. fil ghar. The second of two, if they were in the cave, that is referring to Sayyidina Abu Bakr. That is not befitting of someone of your standing that is referring to Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Three times explicitly referring to Sayyidina Abu Bakr 
That is how lofty his station is. Radiallahu anhu wa arda. And after Isra' al Mi'raj, when everyone was mocking the Prophet ﷺ for having gone on this night journey, and they came, he came back from the seven heavens, and Abu Jahl went to Sayyiduna Abu Bakr and he said, Do you hear what your friend is saying? He's saying that he went on some miraculous night journey. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, without hesitating, he said, In qalaha faqad sadaq. If he said it, then it is truth. That is why he is Abu Bakr Siddiq. Never hesitant to say, I believe. Never hesitant in submitting himself to the guidance of Allah in the Quran and following in the footsteps of the Prophet. It wasn't just a matter of not being hesitant, but it was his entire existence was governed by this thirst and this desire to please Allah and to follow in the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That was his siddiqiyya, his truthfulness, his profound truthfulness. One day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was sitting with the companions and he started to ask, this is right after Salatul Fajr, right after the dawn prayer, early in the morning. And he says, who today is fasting? Man minkum sa'im. Sayyidina Abu Bakr raises his hand. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I intended in the night to fast and I woke up in a state of siyam. Who amongst you visited someone who was sick? Man zara marid. Who visited someone who was sick? And this is at Fajr. Sayyidina Abu Bakr raises his hand. Anna Ya Rasulullah. said, Ya Rasulullah, I knew that one of the companions... I believe it was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, was sick. And so instead of taking my normal route to come to the masjid, I made sure that I passed by his house first, checked up on him, made sure he was okay, made sure he had something to eat, and then I came to the masjid. Thoughtfulness, Allahu Akbar. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi asked, he said, who, some, who is someone today who gave in charity? Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an raised his hand. And all the companions, you know, they did this big sigh. <laughs> always sabbaq, always the first. Abu Bakr raised his hand and said, Ya Rasulullah, as I was coming to the masjid and I had my son with me, my son was eating a piece of bread. And I saw someone who was poor, so I took the bread from my child and I gave it to the poor person. And subhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, I give you glad tidings of Jannah. I give you the glad tidings that you will be gifted heaven. Sayyujannabuha al atqa That was his secret. He was taqi. He was fully conscious and aware every single moment of his life. When he woke up, all he could think about was how was he going to serve Allah and follow his messenger today? How was he going to do that? Because he lived with intentionality. He went to sleep thinking, I want to fast tomorrow. I'm going to restrict my body from its pleasures. I'm going to sacrifice food and drink and relations. I'm going to discipline myself. May Allah grant us Ramadan, which is less than three months away. The blessed month of Ramadan, where we can collectively control and discipline ourselves from the shahawat, from the desires and the inclinations of the lower self. But he says, with intentionality, I wake up because I want to engage in that ibadah known as fasting, which I know that only Allah will reward me for. I know that when I fast, 70 years are placed between myself and hellfire. That when you fast, lillahi jalla wa ala, sincerely for Allah, 70 years are placed between you and hellfire. The distance of 70 years, subhanAllah. That he wakes up with a thirst to relieve people of their hardships. Because he knows what's pleasing to Allah is that when we serve his creation. And so who is sick so that I can go and I can soften their heart? I can bring them comfort and maybe some food because I know Allah loves when I serve and I take care and I visit someone who's sick. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu says in a hadith Qudsi that Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Abdi maritu wa lam ta'udni. My servant, I got sick and you didn't visit me. And the servant says, Ya Allah, how do you get sick? And of course, Hasha Allah does not get sick. But Allah says, 
that my servant so and so was sick and you did not visit them. And so when you're going to visit a sick person, you're going to visit Allah Jalla wa ala. You're doing something that Allah loves because Allah loves when you soften the heart of your brother or your sister. Allah loves when you relieve the poor person of their pain and their agony and their hurt and their hunger. And so Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he woke up with this purpose in life to serve Allah and to serve his creation. Radiallahu anhu arda. That's why he is as Siddiq because he was truthful every single day. How am I going to serve Allah? As soon as he entered into Islam, in the early days of the Meccan period, as soon as he entered into Islam, the first thing he did was he began to free poor people. Dozens of, poor, uh, dozens of those who were enslaved and who were under the torment of their masters, Abu Bakr rushed to free them. And his father Abu Quhafa kept on saying, why do you keep on freeing all these weak? and quote-unquote worthless slaves. They can't help us in any way. He said, I'm not doing it for us. I'm doing it for the pleasure of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Because I know Allah loves when you relieve people of hardship. And one of the most beautiful stories in this regard is when, when he went to, to free our master Bilal, radiallahu an. Sayyidina Umar says, when he would see Abu Bakr, and Bilal, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr and Sayyiduna Abu Layl together, he would say, Hada Sayyiduna A'taqa Sayyidana. This is our master, Abu Bakr, who freed our master Bilal. Radiallahu anhum ajma'in. May Allah be pleased with them. And may Allah make them well pleased and happy in the afterlife, to be in the highest levels. And may Allah make us all with them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr, he went to free Sayyiduna Bilal. And as many of us know, his master was Umayyah ibn Khalaf, who was one of the most treacherous and abusive people in the Meccan society. And so Abu Bakr said, I want to free this man Bilal. He said, how much are you going to pay? He said, I'll pay nine uqiyah min dhahab. Nine uqiyah, one uqiyah is roughly around 30 grams of gold. So you can do the, the math, which is a lot of gold. And so Umayyah laughed and he said, go ahead, take him. And then when he took the money, he said, by the way, if you would have offered me one uqiya or even less, I would have given you Bilal. Abu Bakr said, wallahi, if you were to have asked me for 100 uqiya, I would have given it to you. Because he was someone who was sadiq, truthful, committed to Allah. He knows that this pleases Allah. So even if it requires me giving my wealth, he did not hesitate because he loved Allah and he loved his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa He loved this religion so much and it was so profoundly embedded in his soul that six of those who were guaranteed Jannah, the Prophet tells us of ten who were guaranteed Jannah amongst the companions, six of them entered into Islam through Sayyiduna Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Uthman ibn Affan, Az Zubair ibn Awam, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, and others. They entered into Islam through his profound, spirited love of this religion. And it's not that he had so much knowledge in the informational, intellectual sense of the religion, but he had spiritual knowledge. He knew La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. He knew the truth of this existence and that manifested itself so profoundly that when you were in his presence, you wanted to be liberated the way he was liberated. That is why it is to exit people from the darkness of ignorance to the beautiful light of certainty. Min al-dhulumati ila nur Abu Bakr radiallahu an, the reason he was so committed because he was enveloped in the darkness of ignorance like many were. But when the light of certainty, when the light of servitude came into his life, and he saw clearly the purpose of existence, he was done. He was settled. And the way you can liken it to, if you want to really understand, is imagine if you're walking in a, in a dark forest, 
in the pitch black of the night, you see how worried and scared you are. You're doubtful of what may be behind the corner. What was that sound and what is that? And I see something, some semblance of an object. What is that? And you can you imagine how torturous that can be to walk in the darkness of a forest at night. But if someone turns on an immediate bright light and you can see beautifully clearly everything, you can see that there's a tree there, a shrub there, you see your companion is there, you see, you immediately feel what? Relief. That's why the scholars called it bardul yaqeen, the coolness of certainty. And that is what Islam is. And that is how Islam manifested itself in Sayyiduna Abu Bakr. That he was in dhulumatul jahl, and then he became, he entered into nurul yaqeen, the light of certainty. And so, being in that light, he knew that all I want to do is designate all of my affairs, lillah. I want to do everything to be with the Prophet ﷺ and to serve him. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, when he had to make the hijrah from Mecca to Medina, and we know that that journey was a journey of death, that it came at a point where the Meccan society had holistically decided that they are going to put an end to the Prophet, eviscerate him, kill him. There was a huge bounty on his head. And so it was assumed that the Prophet would die on his journey from Mecca to Medina. And he snuck in the middle of the night. He went to, the, to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and he said to him, Udhina li bil hijra. I was given the permission to make hijrah from Mecca to Medina, to migrate from Mecca to Medina. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, who was of high standing, who was a wealthy man, who was a scholar, a nasab, he was all of these things. He came from the tribe of Banu Taym. He was loved amongst his people. But now with the Prophet, we see the trajectory. And now how, quote unquote, socially low they had become politically low, materially low they had become. But all Sayyiduna Abu Bakr wanted and yearned for was, was that he told the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, as-suhba Ya Rasulullah, as-suhba Ya Rasulullah, please let me be your companion on this journey. That's all I want. All I yearn for is to be your companion on this journey. That's all I thirst for. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Laka thalik you are granted my company. And Sayyidina, Sayyidina Aisha says, I had never seen a man cry out of such joy to be gifted an opportunity to be with the Prophet Sallallahu where most likely they were going to be killed. But that was his love for Allah. That was his love for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know Sayyidina Abu Bakr, when they describe him in the books of Tarajim, he was not a brawny or strong man by any stretch. Physically, they would say his legs looked like poles. And he was so skinny that his cheeks were sucked in. And that you can see a, a concave quality to his eyes. But he was the bravest. He was unrelentingly brave. One day, the Prophet wasallam was around the Kaaba and he was talking to people and this is once again early on and the people began to castigate him and push him around and bully him Sallallahu ala habibina Sayyidina Abu Bakr heard this so he rushed and he jumped in and he started to push the people away because they knew they could only take it so far with the Prophet because the Prophet's family is still around but when they saw Abu Bakr and they knew that they could take further advantage of him because he wasn't as protected as the Prophet was. And the Prophet was saying, Ataqtuluna, Sayyidina Abu Bakr was saying, Ataqtuluna rajulan an yaqula rabbi Allah. Do you hurt, do you kill, do you try to abuse a man who says that my Lord is Allah? Is this, is why, is this why you're hurting him? And so they began to beat Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And they beat him and they beat him so badly that they, as they say, rearranged his face. You couldn't make out his eyes from his nose of how bad he was bloodied and beaten. And so they took him to his house. And his mother, Ummul Khair, and his father, Abu Quhafa, were there. And they saw him in the state. He was unconscious. 
But a day later when he became conscious, the first thing that came out of his mouth was, مَا فُعِلَ بِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. How is the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم? How is he doing? That was his only concern. And his mother, Umm Al-Khayr, who was not yet a Muslim, said to him, why do you care about this man and all he's brought you is so much grief, so much agony. Look at what has happened to you because of how much you care about him. He said, I only care about him. She tried to feed him food. He rejected. He said, I will not taste anything until I am sure that the Prophet ﷺ is okay. And he, she said, I don't know where he is. She said, go call Umm Jamil. Umm Jamil was the sister of Umar radiallahu an. So Umm Khair, the mother of Abu Bakr, went to the sister of Umar radiallahu an. And she said, he wants to see your prophet. So she came and she said to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Umm Jamil said to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, your mother is not a Muslim and we're keeping the prophet's whereabouts sacred, secret and so on and so forth. She said, don't worry, just take me to him. And so on one side, Umar, Sayyidina Abu Bakr put his arm over Umm Jamil. On the other side, his arm over Umm Al-Khayr, his mother. And they took him to the Prophet Sallallahu quarters. And when he walked in on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet saw him and the Prophet began to cry. Tears dripping from his face. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr fell on the floor and rushed to the Prophet and wiped the tears from his face saying, Ya Rasulullah, don't cry. Please don't cry. It hurts me to see you in pain. Subhanallah. Radiallahu anhu arda. That although he was physically debilitated, all he cared about was the Prophet's sadness to see him in that state. And then immediately he said, Ya Rasulullah, this is my mother, Umm Al-Khayr. Please, let us... Let us be blessed by having her enter into Islam with us. And her, his mother, Umm Al-Khayr, seeing her son, seeing the beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, seeing the love that they had for one another. She said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. That was Sayyiduna Abu Bakr and his love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That when he was on the hijrah, and they were entering the cave of Thawr. The Prophet, the Prophet was told by Sayyidina Abu Bakr, please wait outside the cave one second. Sayyidina Abu Bakr began to tear his own clothing, taking pieces of cloth and stuffing it into the, the holes that were in the, in the cave. And the ones he couldn't cover, he covered with his hands and his legs. Then he told Sayyidina Muhammad to come in. And the Prophet was sleeping on his lap. And as he was sleeping, a snake bit the foot of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr. And that is why Sayyiduna Abu Bakr was blocking those holes. He didn't want anything to harm the Prophet. And the pain was so excruciating that he began to cry. And as the Prophet was sleeping, he felt the tears of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr. So the Prophet ﷺ woke up and he said, what's happening? He said, I was bitten. So the Prophet ﷺ himself took the foot of, the, of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr and he took out the venom with his own lips. And he told Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Don't be sad. And the scholars of tafsir, they say, why is it that he was referred to as not being sad? Because Sayyidina Abu Bakr, all he cared about was not wanting to see the Prophet ﷺ get hurt. That's why he was sad. He was worried about the mushrikeen harming the Prophet ﷺ. Brothers and sisters, this is a manifestation of iman, of genuine belief, of truthful, honest commitment to Allah. It is a love for the Qur'an. It is a love for the Prophet ﷺ. It is not wanting to see anything harm the Prophet or his way ﷺ. And it is a daily commitment to following in that footstep, to giving and giving in abundance. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he gave Everything he had, fi sabilillah. Not once, not twice, but three times, he gave all of his wealth. 
He started off Islam with 40,000 dirhams. He died owing 6,000 dirhams because of how much he gave people. This was his nature, Ata. So much so that those who were not Muslim in society knew how profound he was and how necessary his presence was in society. That when the first hijrah to Ethiopia happened, the Prophet gave the permission to Abu Bakr to go. And Ibn Dughunna found the Prophet, found Sayyidina Abu Bakr leaving. Ibn Dughunna said to him, Where are you going? He said, I'm leaving because the people are kicking us out. He said, Laysa li mithlika and yuhajir. It is not okay for someone of your ilk to leave. And this was a non Muslim describing Sayyidina Abu Bakr. He said, Lianaka tasilul rahm wa tahmilul kal. You are someone who takes care of your family. You are someone who picks up and uplifts those who are weak. You are someone who feeds the poor. You are someone who carries the burdens of others. He was described just exactly the way the Prophet ﷺ was described by Khadija. And so Ibn Dughunna said, You come and you stay in my home and I will protect you. And he went and he went back under the protection of Ibn Dughunna. But Sayyidina Abu Bakr, and I'll close with this. He's someone who loved the book of Allah. And kana bakka, he was someone who cried a lot. And whenever he recited the book of Allah, he would cry. And one of the things that the mushrikeen hated about Sayyidina Abu Bakr is that when he would read the Quran, the people around would become so impacted and they would be drawn to him like flies to a light, like moths to a light. So one night he's reading in the house of Ibn Dughunna and he's reading out loud and he begins to cry. And many of the women and children who were around and some of the men came to listen and they were moved. And so the chieftains of the mushrikeen became so angry and they went to Ibn Dughunna and they said, you either keep him silent or we're going to have a big problem. So Ibn Dughunna went to Abu Bakr and said, please, I beg you, read your Quran but do it silently. He said, absolutely not. This is the words of Allah. You have to come out with, with confidence with regards to the book of Allah, with what you are commanded to do. And so he said, if you can't stay silent, then I can't protect you. He said, I don't need your protection then. This was a man who was a scholar of the companions, one of the seven fuqaha. He was scholarly. This was a man who was deeply spiritual, read his Quran, prayed every night and cried. This was a man who was committed to serving his community and serving creation of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And one of the most profound stances that he took was when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. Where everyone lost it. Sayyidina Umar couldn't fathom it and if he heard anyone saying the Prophet died, he threatened to hurt him. Uthman was hiding, Ali was hiding. Everyone was out of their wits. Sayyidina Abu Bakr went on the mimbar and he said, Man kana ya'budu Muhammad, Muhammad qad mat. If you worship Muhammad, Muhammad has died. Man kana ya'budu Allah, fa inna Allah hayyun la yamut. But if you worship Allah, Allah is alive and he never dies. That was his iman, radiallahu an. May Allah grant us the iman of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. May Allah make us amongst the siddiqeen those who are truthful in their iman, those who seek every single day to find the manifestation of the truthfulness of iman in their lives. That iman is not simply something that is in the heart. It is not simply something that is uttered on the tongue, but it is something that is manifested in the body. It is body, mind, and soul. It is qawlun bil lisan, tasdiqun bil janan, wa amalun bil arkan. It is this trilateral reality that realizes one's iman and one's truthfulness. May Allah make our waking hours all about our desire to please Allah and to follow in the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and to make this house of Allah a beaming, shining light the way the Prophet sallallahu mosque was was full of people who committed themselves to the way of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li
ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا brothers and sisters in closing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Sayyiduna Abu Bakr in the Quran وَسَيُجَنَّبُهَا الْأَتْقَى الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَا لَهُ يَتَزَكَّى وَمَا لِأَحَدٍ عِنْدَهُ مِنْ نَعْمَةٍ تُجْزَى إِلَّا بِتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى وَلَا سَوْفَ يَرْضَى That all, as Allah tells us and describes to us, how Sayyiduna Abu Bakr will be safe from hellfire and he will be granted the highest levels of Jannah. He says that all Sayyiduna Abu Bakr cared about was pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى He only desired the pleasure of God. وَلَا سَوْفَ يَرْضَى And Allah says, and he will be well pleased. We will give him pleasure beyond belief, beyond comprehension. Allah says this about Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Brothers and sisters, that is the power of committing yourself to Allah. That you live every single day of your life. That you filter every single action. Whether it's your job. Whether it's your schooling. Whether it's your marriage. Whether it's your children. Whether it's the way you dress. The way you talk. How you engage society. Whatever it is that you do in your life. It must be filtered through the lenses of is this pleasing to Allah. That is the only thing that is of concern. Because that was the concern of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr. And the result and the gift of that was, وَلَا سَوْفَ يَرْضَى And he will be well pleased. May Allah make us amongst those who will be well pleased. We are so honored and blessed to have with us today, on this blessed day of Jumu'ah, a man who bi Allah ta'ala, Allah will grant him well pleasure because we, we assume of him only the best. And that is our dear grandfather and father, Justice Ismail Lahir who I spoke about last khutbah, and bi fadlillah he is with us today. May Allah make him as amongst those who will be in the footsteps of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, who will be well pleased, because we assume of him only the best, and we've seen with him, from him, and heard of him only the best, of his following in the footsteps of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, and the stories of many, inshallah, one day we'll share them. But let us make dua for our fathers and our mothers, our elders, our righteous predecessors, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all those who love Allah and His Messenger. May Allah guide us in the pathway of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. May Allah make us amongst the Siddiqeen. May Allah make us amongst the Shuhada. May Allah make us amongst the Salihin. May Allah make us amongst those who say Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us imanan kamilan wa sadiqa wa naqiyya, a pure and firm iman. A iman that is so well grounded in the heart that compels us every single day to serve Allah and to serve His creation. We want to live as stewards on this earth, to live prophetically and to show people the beauty of Allah Jalla wa Ala and His mercy. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم إن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون.